This is a Kawai HA20 that's just come into stock. Not something I've come across before and is rather unusual. It's got this written on the front. We took it in part exchange for a Blue and the Grand Piano and uh, it's different in various aspects. We've just taken them out, but there's actually screws in here. We couldn't lift the top up because it has no hinge at the back, but it's screwed on, uh, which is very strange. And certainly every Kawai we've come across which is a firm we greatly respect and sell new Kawai K200s and other, other Kawais as well. But look, two screws holding the top on. Also, the bottom panel is screwed on here. Uh, you have to take that out in order to take it off. Haven't done that yet, so just about to. Now, good news is like the K200, which we sell a lot of, a new K200, it has a lot of leg room. It has about four centimeters extra, 65 and a half. Uh, 61 and a half is roughly the Yamaha U1, for instance. So look at the inside HA20. Uh, maybe if uh, you're a piano dealer, you can help me with that or a tuner as to who made it. I don't know if HA stands for Hanoi possibly, um, but because uh, often the J, for instance, on Yamaha stands for Jakarta, where Indonesia. Um, so there we have a serial number. I think that dates it to 1995, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's got a hydrosteel unit in that someone's put in. Uh, you take that out and put it in the bath, fill it with water and put it back in. Um, I don't really recommend those because they get forgotten. They're bone dry, this one is. And uh, so it's not the best idea. If you want to keep your piano in good, uh, keep it in a room that's not too hot. That should do the trick, especially a modern piano. You shouldn't get any problem. Older ones are, as well it won't give you a problem if you uh, look after the environment properly. So looking inside, it definitely looks like a Kawai, so that's what it is, I'm sure. You see the aluminium uh, action rail here, that's common. I prefer the older action rails, really, would, because you can work on them more easily. Hammers here are very hard, and we'll hear them. Ta tone a bit thin in the middle, a bit harsh, really. But um, the action plays all right. It plays pretty well, in fact. This was actually owned by a, um, a, an, or an organ scholar, and uh, had it, I think, all his uh, life as he's quite young still. As I say, it's part exchange for a Blute and a Grand, which he's got, but, um, so the piano mechanically is fine. Very thin toned there. But um, better than the keyboard, I think, if you're thinking of starting with a piano. So, uh, as I say, quite hard to assess this. We don't normally sell this kind of piano. Compare this tone the Yamaha U3. They're a much sweeter sound, deeper sound as well if you listen to that. Compare it to this one. Now I could voice the hammers a bit, but it's not just that, it's, it's the depth of tone in the piano that's not there. Here's a new Foric. Again, it sings beautifully. And that's the area you want it to sound good, around the mid treble. So back to the Kawhi hear that sound break point you often it's difficult with a lot of pianos and that's really harsh and we, i have already voiced this hammer don't voice it anymore in case it just ends up sounding soggy the action here is very plasticky as well uh, they kawaii went through a very plastic phase yamaha less so um but this is uh, that's all plastic and also the the dampers the only things that aren't is the hammers wooden shanks uh this is uh that's plastic too so we have pretty much plastic action but having said that still better than the keyboard after all the keyboard's plasticky as well um, but it has the touch of a real piano which is nice round here good break point actually so we can't completely we can't say completely negative things about it and as i say it's better i would think it's better than having a keyboard you get better touch now i've got the bottom panel off let's look at the soundboard and straight away we can see why it's uh, a thin tone this is a uh, cheap cheap wood and what it is but um it's certainly not spruce and uh well at least it's not good spruce i'm not a wood person so don't quote me too much on this but uh, it's it's straight grain straight across you see and let's look at a foric so here's a foric spruce soundboard and the grain that way as you should have on an upright. Um, though you do get uprights in various phases where they had straight, and, and some of them actually sound quite good. But this is diagonal, as you can see, and beautifully made. Also, wooden pedals, typical, like an old style piano, this is um, for its really well designed piano. Um, so there's wood here. Let's look at this Kawaii again. 
So here we have um, uh, metal, I guess you can see, tubular, and um, obviously trying to make the cheapest possible piano that still plays well. And, and being Kawhi, they've, they've, they've succeeded in making a piano that really has had no technical problems. This is the Yamaha U3. Uh, again, a uh, very well-made soundboard. I've heard it said many times that, although this is tubular pedals here, but I've heard it said many times that the spruce on, on the soundboard um, was the best spruce. Yamaha bought, bought a huge amount of spruce for the Yamaha when the Yamaha U1H was made, and it's the best soundboard that the Yamahas have had in uprights. I don't know how much of that is exaggerated, but certainly the U... 3H, sorry, U1 and U3H uh, were the longest running Yamahas of all time, 1972 to about 1980. So that's an assessment of a Kawai HA20, 120 centimeters long, uh, made in about 1995, and uh, plays softly. It, it sounds fine, and uh, the action is uh, surprisingly very good and very reliable being Kawai. But having said that, the, the, the tone here, it's so thin that um, we're questioning what to do with the piano. It's not something we would normally sell. We could rent it out cheaply, I suppose. Um, if someone wanted to play very little as a rental, then that might be a possibility. Because I, I don't have any problem guaranteeing it in terms of its functionality. And as I say, the, the action, it's better to have this than a keyboard. The action is more responsive. But the tone rounds here. I don't know if you can pick it up on the video, the harshness of it. We've compared it to some other pianos um, and uh, it really doesn't sing like it should do. The bass, the tenor and the bass, is not too bad for the length of the piano, but the area that you want it to sing is around here and it just doesn't do it. Cheaply made piano, the soundboard is uh, um, straight grain rather than diagonal. And um, so you don't get the depth of sound, you don't get the carrying through from one end of the piano to the other. The, the, I'm, I'm sure that the down bearing is bad on it. So um, very difficult to assess. If anybody knows this model of piano, I'd love to hear um, where it came from and uh, if, what you can say about it. Thank you for listening.